Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Winning Drive podcast. I'm Rita Hubbard, the NFL chick, co-host of the Glenn and Rita show on 105.7 The Fan with my guy Cordell Woodland from Shaking It Up Sports and the Ravens reporter for 105.7 The Fan. And Cordell, big news uh, coming out of Buffalo. Uh, Stephon Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans uh, to give C.J. Stroud, you know, another weapon that they have uh, next to Nico Collins and the likes of others. And, of course, that put the, the Ravens flock in a little bit of, of a tendency, uh, you know, feeling some type of way, I guess, about not being able to add a veteran wide receiver. Um, and in addition to that, we saw that J.K. Dobbins was planning to visit the Kansas City Chiefs um, to see, you know, how – if, if they are willing to bring him on to their roster after signing another former Raven in Marquise Hollywood Brown. So first off with the Diggs trade, um, saw a lot of discourse about it. It's funny because I had, I had literally just tweeted him that morning because there was uh he was kind of getting obliterated by Bill's fans regarding a, a, a response to uh, Robert Griffin, the third about his importance to, Josh Allen's development and uh, he responded to you know a person on Twitter and it just created a firestorm of Bills fans basically saying he ain't been nothing in the playoffs which you know if you do look at his playoff numbers it, it is one to be it's a discussion it, it, he hasn't been that great but I don't think that we can not say that Josh Allen definitely benefited more from Stefan Diggs than not. I definitely think that that can be the case. But he then soon gets traded to the Houston Texans. And, of course, the Flockers are feeling some type of way. I think mainly because what the Ravens have done traditionally in the past is bring in a veteran wide receiver to help you know, with the team. Now, you could argue that Nelson Aguilar is that guy, but I, I I don't think that that's what people mean by that. You look at Derek Mason, who was traded, or, or maybe he was a free agent from the Titans. Anquan Bowden was, of course, a trade. Steve Smith was a free agent signing. So uh, I think what we're seeing now is the Ravens trying to move away from getting guys like a Stephon Diggs and wanting to um, force their hand to draft wide receivers as opposed to continuously bringing a veteran that will only give you a couple of years of productivity. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't, I, I didn't understand why Ravens fans were in their feelings about this. I no thought ever creeped into my mind that Stefan Diggs would be a really he, like not once that you think it that wasn't even on my him. radar honestly it okay. really wasn't on my radar I I mean he okay. just he just doesn't fit the bill um and not from a talent perspective I definitely think Stefan Diggs can play and it's ironic and I tweeted this yesterday that I started to see all these people on my timeline all of a sudden trying to convince themselves that Stefan Diggs can't play anymore or that he's not one of the top wide receivers in the NFL. That's blasphemy. He definitely still is. And and I get he finished the season on a low note. Um but that that's not enough for me to erase his entire body of work even just from last year. I mean, he still finishes top 10 in receptions. Uh he finishes with over 1100 receiving yards, top 10 in touchdowns as well with eight. I mean, I I I, I hear the the fact that you know when the bit in the most important time of the year uh he he hasn't necessarily been there for the bills and that's that's the unfortunate part um but I don't think it's a situation where Stefan Diggs isn't worth uh you know any money or anything like that isn't worth being looked at as still a guy that could be a wide receiver one on a team and you mentioned the Ravens, you know, bringing in the veteran guys. I mean, I think they still do. You know, they just brought in uh, Odell Beckham last year. And uh, you mentioned Nelson Aguilar. And 
Uh, we, we've seen them bring in the Des Bryant's of the world. I mean, the problem is they're getting these guys, you, you, you they're getting the, the veterans that have nothing left. I mean, you mentioned right. the, yeah. the, the Steve Smith's and the Derek Mason's and Anquan Bolden's. It's been a while since they brought in veterans like that, that still had something left in the tank and were able to give some, still some good, some good football to the Ravens. I mean, the veterans that they have signed recently outside of Nelson Aguilar, um, hasn't really given them much. Um, but I, so I didn't, I, from that perspective, that was one that I just felt like, uh, Diggs has still got too much left for the Ravens to kick the tires on him. Diggs is they there. They'll call him when he's got, you know, uh, a, a sip left in the can. That, that, that's about it. Now, in terms of the move to the Texans, I mean, good for them. Good for them. I mean, I thought Nico <laughs> Collins, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Nico you're like good for them, you know? <laughs> good for them. I mean, I, what can what can I say? I mean, I, I, I'm always for teams trying. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, I'm all, yeah for sure. You have a, a quarterback on a rookie deal. I mean, this is the time to swing for the fences, especially when that, that quarterback on that rookie deal showed himself to be as good as C.J. Stroud did last year. And you look at the Texans, I mean, they go and get Joe Mixon this offseason. Um, they just got Stephon Diggs to go along with Nico Collins, who I thought would, could be a wide receiver one anyway. You know, I, I I thought Nico was fine. And then Tank Dell comes back next year, and he was one of the best rookie wide receivers in the league this past year and t- up until he got hurt. So, I mean, they are loaded. And Dalton Schultz at tight end, I mean, good luck trying to stop the Texans offensively. And even last year we saw – they can be unguardable at times. I mean, they had Nico yeah. Collins and the dudes running wide open. So I can only imagine what's going to happen with Stefan Diggs out there. I, I, I just don't see a scenario unless health gets in the way that this doesn't work out for them. I'm not saying that they're going to win the Super Bowl or anything like that. A lot has to happen <laughs> uh, for, for that to go their way. But you look at this. Well, I see people already implementing them into the AFC championship game. I understand. I mean, Stefan Diggs. It, I mean, look, they they made some really nice moves this offseason. Yeah. And I don't think that we should um, ignore those. They got Joe Mixon, like you said, um, mm-hmm. and now they have Stephon Diggs. So, and C.J. Stroud in his rookie year really looks promising. Now, we have to see how that plays out. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, I while I think that that is going to be the case, you just don't know. You know, right. if from year one to year two, it, it, you continue to ascend or, you know, if you kind of plateau a little bit, we'll see. But, you know, people already have them penciled in, which is interesting because you got to play the games first. I mean, you know, it sounds good. Yes, they do look good on paper, but ultimately the game still got to get played. And, and that's kind of how I, I see that perspective. Yeah, I mean, you got to be careful with crowning teams who do, you know, go out there and win in free agency and win right. in the off season. Right. Got to be careful crowning exactly. them. Uh, we're not even at the draft yet, so uh, I'm a, I'm gonna give it a little time. But they, what they're doing, I I applaud it. I mean, they look good right now. Absolutely. On the flip side, again, um, I mentioned that J.K. Dobbins was visiting the Kansas City Chiefs, um, mm-hmm. who. Interestingly enough, with the situation regarding um, Rashi Rice, with the, you know, him uh, drag racing and causing a six car accident, this is something that I'm interested in watching unfold because does the league step in? Does he get a suspension? I think that that's something we need to watch. I say that because they did um, bring in Marquise Brown um, to the Chiefs. This offseason. And now, you know, they're supposed to be trying to visit with JK, who is coming off of an Achilles injury. So um, it feels like, you know, I know there were a lot of Ravens fans, and, and I wasn't against it um, in terms of like, could you bring JK back? Because they do have a depth concern um, in terms of the running back position in Baltimore. But I do think that JK is probably best suited to move on. And the Ravens are probably best suited to move on as well. Unfortunately for Ravens fans, <laughs> Kansas City is looking into them and looking into him, which uh, I don't think that makes people feel good considering you know that J.K. Dobbins can give you a, a good five yards per carry. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, I I, I would imagine that Kansas City 
opportunity is probably dead at this point. They they had signed Charles Edwards Hilaire for a one year deal, so pretty much the same day that Dobbins was going in. So I I think that that's probably yeah. dead. Uh, so Dobbins is still going to be available, and it, I saw that him and his team had sent out memos to to teams, letting them know that he's ready to to go now, um, which is good for him. I mean, because that's the big question mark is health, and now it's you know, what type of player is J.K. Dobbins after all these major injuries uh, in such a short span uh, of time? Uh, what does he have left? Um, and look, for the Ravens, I mean, I could I could make a case of why it would make sense from a football perspective. I mean, yeah, you have Derrick Henry and it. They need a they need an RB2 right now because I'm not, I, mm-hmm. I'm not counting on Keaton Mitchell right now. I'm, I'm not counting on Neither him. should you. So I would, I know they have Justice Hill and Justice Hill is a fine player um, and he, he could have some opportunities, but I think you could upgrade at RB too. And JK Dobbins would, could be a guy that would be worth a look. You know, he, I just don't think he would want that. I think he has already had issues with trying to get the opportunities that he feels like he deserved when he was healthy. Um, and now he'll what come back and back up Derrick Henry, who just led the league in carries this past year. I mean, not to say that he's going to do that again in Baltimore. I doubt it. But who knows? I mean, I, I just don't know if that's the situation that J.K. Dobbins necessarily wants. Now, maybe he could look at it like, you know, see what the team did this past year and understands, you know, what he could have done if he was on the field, what the team could have done if he was available and maybe – you know, there's some things that he still wants to do in Baltimore. That could be something that I could see, you know, and it's a way it's kind of both sides helping each other out. He's feeling a need for them. And it still wouldn't stop me from going and, you know, in the draft. If you want to take a flyer on a guy late in the draft, a speedster, because you still need some yep. speed out the backfield, you could still do that, even if you sign J.K., um, so I don't think it would change the Ravens' plans in terms of how they approach the running back position, but I think J.K. would definitely put some ease to that situation, and then also it gives him the opportunity to show to whether it's the Ravens or uh, the other 31 teams in the league that he can not only stay healthy, but he can also be one of the more productive backs in the league. Yeah, I agree with that, and so. Um, you know, it will be a look at uh, LA Chargers have uh, had a thing about bringing mm-hmm. in a lot of former Ravens players. Maybe that's his next move, you know. Maybe he'll be potentially uh, going there. It seems like to be the thing to do these days if you're a former Raven looking for a new home. So, uh, we will see how that unfolds. But as of right now, he, he is still currently a free agent. Like you said, Hilaire, um, was signed for one year deal. I, I, and I think obviously, I, I don't think that Hilaire is a better player than JK Dobbins, but JK Dobbins has a health problem. And I think that that's essentially what a lot of teams will, you know, carefully look into when it comes to JK. You and I both had uh, current and former Ravens on uh, our shows, respectively, this week. Uh, Ronnie Stanley joined Glenn and I on Tuesday. It was really about our project project runway. I always kind of get that <laughs> confused because it's for animals. It's, a, it's an event for animals that will be uh, happening on Thursday, April the 4th. If you've received your tickets, um, please do. Uh, also, uh, Eric and Lacey DaCosta will be co-hosting that event as well. Um, but, you know, we we talked to him about some football stuff. And then you had an opportunity to talk to Morgan Moses, who is now with the New York Jets after being traded uh, on your show. So in terms of the Ronnie Stanley situation, it's funny, Cordell, because Ronnie is the type of guy you can tell he doesn't love interviews I don't mm-hmm. understand that you know sometimes you know guys feel a little bashful a little shy and I think Ronnie is one of those guys kind of had to pull it out of him but we did have a conversation about the offensive line and he said he felt confident about the guys that were there that were remaining um he also mentioned that Voorhees spends um eight to ten hours a day training every day 
um, and trying to get back into his form, which I thought was really impressive. Um, so he's basically spending all day rehabbing, um, trying to get, you know, himself to his old form. And, you know, he felt confident in, in the other guys there, including uh, Daniel Fa'alele. So um, I I had put this out on Twitter not too long ago about like, you know, how would you feel about this offensive line that would include Voorhees or whatever? And I didn't get a lot of um positive feedback on that but I think it's obvious that if the Ravens think that Voorhees is healthy I mean it feels they've done some PR like they they're they're starting to do some PR stuff for him when like put his name out there it feels like that they're going to play Voorhees um and maybe some other guys uh on this roster so just curious to know your thoughts on um you know who they currently have because obviously this can change you know, with the draft, obviously this can change with post June first cuts, but as of right now, that these are the guys that they have, and Ronnie appeared to be confident that they will be able to step up to the challenge. I mean, it's similar to what we said about John Harbaugh talking up Adafi Owe and David Ajabo yep. and Rashad Bateman. It's like, what choice do they have? It's who is what they currently have. So if you ask them about them, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna say all the positive things. They're going to say all the right things about these guys. Um, It is funny, though, to hear you say people weren't, like, buying into, you know, Voorhees or weren't thrilled about Voorhees being a part of the offensive line because based off what? I mean, I couldn't yeah, – exactly I couldn't my say, point. Yeah. I, I couldn't say anything to you for or against a Andrew Voorhees right now because I haven't seen him. I, have, I haven't been able to see him. And uh, for them, I mean, they drafted him – with the idea that he would be able to step in this next year. So this is kind of, this was the plan. I mean, this was the plan when they drafted him last year. So I, this shouldn't be um, a shock to anybody. I think everybody should kind of approach it in a, let's just see what he looks like because none yeah. of us have seen, like I could understand that people are like, I, I don't want to see Ben Cleveland in the offensive line because at least you've seen Ben Cleveland and whatever opinion you have based off of what you've seen on him, you at least have been able to watch him to gather, you know, to, to come up yeah. with that uh, conclusion. But with Voorhees, we, we know nothing but his name. Um, so I, I, I just, it, I'm with him, it's kind of a wait and see situation. Um, and I had Wally Williams on my show the other night um, as well, former Ravens offensive lineman. And I asked him about the importance of uh, continuity on the O-line because the Ravens are about to have three new faces into that offensive line. Whether it's guys that are on this roster or not, they don't yep. have that starter chemistry with Tyler Linderbaum and, and Ronnie Stanley. So they're going to have three new faces in there, and that's a lot. I mean, that's more than half yes. of your offensive line right there for a team that just came off an AFC championship game and is looking to get not only back there but beyond. Um, and I asked Wally about just, you know, the importance of having that continuity because I, I just feel like people are just like, yeah, well, we'll just go get some offensive linemen in the draft and we'll put them in there and it'll be fine. Like, we don't know that. We, we don't right. know how – how it's going to go like you he and Wally made the point of the offensive line is the only unit on the field that has to all five guys have to be in sync it's literally a mm -hmm. chain uh with the yep. offensive line and and you rely on the guys next to you um to to kind of be there for you to you you get used to playing with these guys you get used to understanding how they're going to pass off the stunts and you know how they're going to handle certain protections so it's that relearning all over again with these guys. And it's, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. So I, I do think that's one thing that people need to take into account with this offensive line. It's going to look brand new. Um, and it's no telling what that may look like, at least at the start. You also had the opportunity to speak to Morgan Moses um, during your show. Um, yeah. What, was, what did you get from that conversation? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I talked to him obviously about the trade to the Jets, and you know, he he said he was surprised. He he said he was shocked by it. Um, said he, in fact, he was in the building rehabbing. Um, and that's when he had found out about the deal, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty ironic. Um, 
Yeah. And, you know, I asked him, you know, obviously we know Ronnie Stanley ended up taking a pay cut this year. And it, we all talked about the fact that it may, we may not have both offensive, both tackles, both starting tackles return next year. And it started to feel like whichever one was going to, you know, help the team out on the business end was going to be the one that ended up staying. So I, I, yep. I asked Morgan if the team had approached him about a pay cut at all this off season. And he said they didn't. Um, he said he had no hand in the trade. It just, they kind of just told him what it was and he thanked them and, you know, ended up going back to the jets for the second time. But he, you know, he's definitely talked about um, wanting to, you know, feeling bad that obviously the relationships that he's been able to uh, gather uh, during his time in Baltimore, but just not being able to, you know, uh, complete everything that he wanted to complete in Baltimore. The AFC championship game last year, of course, was tough. And I asked him yeah. about that. He just, he just said it was, he, he defined it as just like a weird game. He just, they just could not figure it out. It just, something fell off and it, it that's what it looked like. It, it looked like just, I mean, we couldn't even recognize that team that we saw in no. that game. So uh, I can imagine for them, they're looking at it like, dude, what is happening right now? Like, why, right. why aren't we ourselves today on the on the day that we absolutely we need, need to be ourselves, right? Ourselves. So I, I just, just think crazy. it's that the human element part of it all, you know, because I, we can. It's easy to look at these guys as like machines because we just see them on the TV and we see them playing this sport on a weekend and week out basis. But I always do like to get that firsthand perspective of like what's happening in the moment, like, as you see, you guys aren't being yourselves, as you see that the things that you normally uh, do well, and you can't do at all today. I mean, what, exactly. you know, what's, what's that like? So it was just good to get his perspective on that. Um, he talked about, you know, obviously Lamar just being a one-on-one and going from, you know, having the pleasure of blocking for Lamar now, and then now going to uh, Aaron Rodgers, who's a future Hall of Famer. I mean, just, it's a, you know, he hates to leave, but he does feel like it's a good situation that he's going to. I mean, the Jets are definitely different today than they were the last time that Morgan Moses was out there. So, um, yeah. you know, he, he's, he definitely said his goodbyes. He's going to miss the city and everything like that. But um, I, I think just from talking to him during my time with him in Baltimore, this was the first time he really got to uh, see how, you know, one of the top organizations are truly running. I, I think he really appreciated that. Absolutely. And so, you know, he'll be missed. I, he was one of the guys that I felt like was um, going to be a cap casualty of some sort. Um, so I definitely did not think that he was going to be on the roster for 2024. So the trade wasn't surprising to me, but nonetheless, um, when he was healthy, I mean, he was a very good player. And so he will definitely be missed on this offensive line for 2024. All right, the NFL draft is approaching Cordell. And you and I, um, along with Glenn, will be uh, co-hosting a draft special on 105.7 The Fan on uh, the first night, Thursday, April the 25th. We're going to be on from 6 to 8. So uh, if you're having, if you're in the Baltimore area or if you have the Odyssey app, please join us as we get prepared for the Ravens to make their pick and also um, have opinions about uh, the other players that have been picked in the draft. Um, in terms of that, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about what it is that the Ravens need. And we know that, you know, it, it's edge rush or it's offensive line or cornerback or wide receiver. But what about the guys that are currently on the roster and we just don't have a finger on what it is that we expect them to do? And so I wanted to talk about Trenton Simpson today, the linebacker. Now, coming out of college, um, Trenton Simpson was, they didn't use the words Adelis Thomas, but he was very versatile. His scouting report says that he was very versatile and he could play on all three levels. Um, what he was known for best uh, was him, you know, getting after the quarterback in college. We saw a little bit of Simpson in the last game against the Steelers as a lot of 
players, uh, starters were not playing in that game. So there were guys like Stemson that had opportunities to get some snaps in, and he played really well. A lot of people were very impressed. So Patrick Queen leaves, goes to the Steelers, and a lot of people are assuming that um, Simpson will be the heir apparent to Queen's position alongside um, our, our, our toted uh, linebacker. And so I'm curious to know if you think that that is a viable replacement next to Roquan Smith, or do you see other things for Trenton Simpson moving forward for 2024? Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like they're ready to move forward with Trent Simpson next year. They pretty much, you know, had him in waiting. Um, they gave him a lot of opportunities in that Week 18 game. So I, I, I think that they're ready to push him in. Now, they they were able to uh, bring back Malik Harrison. I think they'll give Malik Harrison yeah. some opportunities, even though he plays more outside than inside these days. Um, but the reason Trenton Simpson played so much in that week 18 game is because uh, Malik Harrison wasn't healthy. Um, I think Malik Harrison would have gotten a lot of those opportunities had he been available. Um, so that was that was one of the things. Or maybe or maybe it would have been him filling in for Queen and it would have been Harrison and, and Simpson out there because Queen was forced to play quite a bit in that game as well. Um, yep. I'm 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 trying to see how this unfolds with Trenton Simpson. I, I it's it's not that I don't think that he can't play or, or that he can't turn out to be a starter for this team. Um I just don't know. I don't know. They they gave right. him limited opportunities last year and when we did get to see him in action early in the year and um uh in training and training camp and 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 preseason and stuff like that, I mean I wasn't overly impressed. I wasn't overly impressed, but playing linebacker in this league is a tough thing to do. It takes time. I mean, we, we watched Patrick Queen have his, his learning curve um, and it took him some time before it figured out before he started to figure it out. So I, I definitely am going to acknowledge that and, and, and give Trenton Simpson that same type of grace period as well to try to figure this thing out. Um, and it does help him, that he'll be able to have Roquan Smith for the, you know, the complete start of his career, unlike Queen, who who was the guy and, and pretty much right. had to figure right. it out right. on the fly. Um, so that that definitely is going to help Trenton Simpson in a big way. I, I am a little surprised that the Ravens didn't go and maybe sign a veteran linebacker, be, and they are just content, it seems like, to just kind of let Trenton Simpson take over this spot. I thought that – it was there were some veteran linebackers on the open market at, at one point that fit the Ravens type of scheme and what they look for them to do. Um, and especially you talk about teaming them up with Roquan Smith. I thought there were some guys out there that they take a swing at and maybe they did and it just didn't happen. But um, by all accounts, it looks like they're content to go with Trenton Simpson and we'll see. I mean, he plays with a lot of speed. Um, Vinny, uh, on Vinny uh, Serrato on 105.7, the fan, he makes the point that he thinks they're going to use him a lot like how they use Queen, which is pretty much as a blitz or just letting them use his speed, letting them play downhill and, and, and shoot the gaps. And I think that'll be the best thing. My thing is Queen, I thought for as much as people used to talk about Queen's coverage, I thought Queen's coverage got uh, substantially better over time and especially his open field tackling as well. So that'll be the thing that Trenton Simpson, I think, is going to have to really focus on being a short tackler in the open field. And he's got the speed to run with these guys, but speed doesn't always account to good coverage. Can you cover these running backs that'll be coming out of the backfield on these choice routes? Can you cover some of these tight ends that are crossing over the middle of the field? So that'll be the big thing for him. But I, I think when they allow him to kind of pin his ears back and go forward, he, that's that's when he'll be at his best. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm not really sure what his role will be because I think that he is a player that is multifaceted and that can do, you know, different things. And so it's very possible that they're going to move him around. Maybe they are going to have him, you know, uh rush rush the pass, or maybe he is a guy that, you know, is is going to um be able to 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 help you know, sell, sell up the middle of the field and make sure, you know, that that area 
is contained. Um, but what we can say is that he's a talented young man. Um, he's a guy that I do think that the Ravens feel confident in, and maybe that is why they didn't go out and get a veteran linebacker, as you suggested. And it, it will be interesting for us to see how they utilize him. This is a new offensive coordinator that we're talking about with Zach Orr. Um, you, we don't know quite yet how his style of defensive play calling is. So that also is going to play a role into what Trenton Simpson is going to be able to do. Um, but I, I, what we can, what I believe, um, and what we did see in a little bit of action that we did see for him is that um, there is some talent there. And, you know, as long as you have very good coaching that can help you, um, you know, learn the system like everybody else is about to, because this is, you know, this is a new guy for everybody. But ultimately, this might be the best situation because it feels like I don't want to say he's going to be a starter, but he's going to get a large increase of snaps this season, which means that now that his role is going to increase, it allows him to learn a new system like everybody else is, as opposed to. You know, last year he didn't play much different defensive coordinator, but this year he's going to get more play time and have the opportunity to learn um, from Zach Orr. So um should be fun. I, I definitely think that the Ravens don't consider them to have a linebacker problem and that there's other priorities that they have opposed to that position. But again, we, we've seen this happen before. We've seen them say, OK, a guy got cut. We could use the depth. We'll go from there. But I do think that they are confident, <clears throat> excuse me, in Trenton Simpson's abilities. Yeah, I mean, and rightfully so. I mean, they drafted him last year. And I think just like we mentioned with Andrew Voorhees earlier, I think they understood that this was going to be a move for next year, which is this year right. coming up. So yep. they're, they're right on schedule. They're, that's a part of the draft, too. You know, um, you can draft guys with the idea of using them a year or so down the line. And I think we'll start to see some of those players uh, get on the field for them this year. Absolutely. I completely agree. So we want to thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week to talk more Ravens with you from Cordell to me. This is winning drive.